Summary of The Last Lecture by Randy Porsche with Jeffrey Zaslow The Ultimate Irony Many colleges conduct a series of last lectures, in which they ask professors to imagine that they are about to die and to think about what wisdom, philosophies or beliefs they would like to pass on before they go. Randy Porsche's participation in Carnegie Mellon series, renamed Journeys, represents the ultimate irony. Porsche, a noted computer science professor at the university, prepared his final lecture knowing that he was dying of pancreatic cancer. Conflicting emotions tormented Porsche as he prepared the lecture. Considering the prognosis that he had only months to live, he certainly could have cancelled it. Married to Jay, and the father of three children ages five, two and one, Porsche had precious little time left with his loved ones. They had recently moved from Pittsburgh, home of the university, to Virginia where Jay's family lives. She was upset that his flight back to Pittsburgh for the lecture coincided with her 41st birthday, the last one they would celebrate together. However, Porsche came to the realization that his lecture could serve as a legacy for his children. He wanted them to understand what he stood for and who he was. With Jay's blessing, Porsche prepared a talk that focused on living a full, meaningful life and the importance of realizing your dreams. On September 18, 2007, Porsche, 46, addressed a capacity crowd of 400, including his wife. Porsche opened by quoting his father as saying, if there is an elephant in the room, introduce it. So, that's what he did, he began by explaining his condition and his impending death. Paying tribute to great parents. Porsche grew up near Baltimore in a solid middle-class family that valued morality and education, and shunned materialism. Porsche's mother was a hard-driving English teacher who expected a lot from her students and her children. His father, a decorated World War II medic, fought on behalf of the underprivileged. His small auto insurance business sold policies to poor inner-city people who normally would be an insurable. The family used money for life's necessities and important goals, not for movies and restaurant meals. Porsche's parents funded a dormitory in Thailand to help keep girls in school and away from prostitution. The family's dinner table discussions were stimulating forums for thoughts and ideas. If he had questions, Porsche looked for the answers in the dictionary or encyclopedia. He greatly admired his father's ethics and tried to practice the same principles as an adult. His parents encouraged Porsche to dream and to use his imagination. He slept in a bunk bed his father built. In high school, he painted unique decorations on his bedroom walls, including a mathematical formula, a large elevator door, a submarine, chess pieces and a version of Pandora's box. His father strongly endorsed the project, his mother came around more slowly, but eventually took great pride in her son's creativity. They never painted over the walls. Childhood wishes do come true. One of the slides Porsche showed during his lecture listed his six childhood dreams. They were Being in zero gravity Playing in the NFL Authoring an article in the World Book Encyclopedia Being Captain Kirk Winning stuffed animals Being a Disney Imaginer Porsche experienced weightlessness in 2001 when a group of his students submitted a proposal to NASA for a virtual, reality project aboard the agency's zero-gravity plane. Faculty members weren't permitted to accompany their students on board, so the quick-thinking Porsche resigned, as faculty advisor and flew as a journalist covering the event. Though he loved tackle football, Porsche never played in a pro game, but he learned valuable lessons from his coach. Former Penn State linebacker Jim Graham taught Porsche the importance of fundamentals, hard work and perseverance. Graham's players developed self-esteem by learning new skills and practicing them repeatedly. Porsche adopted Graham's philosophy and tried to teach his students to deal with hardship, play as a team and be good sports. Because his family emphasized learning and self-awareness, Porsche loved reading the encyclopedia and eagerly anticipated publication of the annual updated e-books. He always fantasized about being a contributor. He got his chance several years ago when World Books editors asked him to write the entry on virtual reality. One of Porsche's childhood idols was Captain Kirk, the dashing commander of the starship. Enterprise in the Star Trek TV and film series. Porsche admired Kirk's leadership and managerial skills, 
including how he delegated responsibility while creating a singular purpose and vision among the crew. William Shatner, the actor who portrayed Kirk, visited Porsche's virtual reality lab when he was co-authoring a book on how science had realized many of the advanced technologies introduced on Star Trek. Shatner spent three hours at the lab and asked many questions. When he learned of Porsche's illness, Shatner sent him a photo of Kirk inscribed with a line he spoke in an episode of Star Trek, I don't believe in the no-win scenario. Porsche inherited his father's love of the kind of giant stuffed animals you can win at carnival games. Porsche collected quite a few over the years and he brought them on stage during his final lecture. He invited audience members to come up and take home an animal. A student who also had cancer took the big, stuffed elephant, so she, too, could talk about the elephant in the room. Porsche became fascinated with Disneyland during a trip when he was eight years old. After earning his doctorate in computer science, he applied unsuccessfully for a position with Walt Disney Imagineering. In 1995, Porsche, then a University of Virginia professor, heard that Disney had undertaken a project in virtual reality, one of his areas of interest. He spent six months of his sabbatical working with the Imagineering team. Heading into rough waters. Porsche was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, the deadliest form of the disease, in the summer of 2006. He underwent extensive surgery followed by chemotherapy and radiation, dropping from 182 to 138 pounds. A January 2007 CAT scan was clear but in August another scan revealed that the cancer had spread to his liver. His doctor indicated he had only three to six months of good health. Right after getting this jolting news, Porsche told his wife that he intended to make the best of every day. In fact, a Carnegie Mellon vice president spotted Porsche driving in his convertible, top-down, tapping his fingers to the music on the radio. Knowing his medical condition, she told Porsche in an email how impressed she was with his mood and attitude. A lesson in humility. Porsche learned an important lesson when he was a very bright but brash student at Brown University. He was a teaching assistant for a renowned computer science professor who told him that his arrogance and inflexibility would prevent him from maximizing his accomplishments. Porsche appreciated the candid advice and acknowledged the importance of knowing people who tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. A matter of perspective. Like his parents, Porsche put little stock in material possessions. When he was a bachelor, he frequently entertained his sister's two children. Once he picked them up in his new Volkswagen convertible. His sister warned her kids not to get the car dirty, advice Porsche believed was impossible for them to obey. He promptly poured a can of soda on the back seat to convey the message that people are more important than things. That weekend, his nephew got sick all over the back seat, Porsche was glad he had showed the boy beforehand that he wouldn't be angry. On a day when Porsche had walked to work, Jay backed her minivan out of the garage and hit his parked convertible. Nervous all day about his reaction, she prepared his favorite meal and tried to act especially sweet. Porsche hardly reacted to the bad news, even choosing not to repair the damage since both cars were still fully operational. The Porsches just drove dented cars. Dream the possible dream. Porsche was an eight-year-old at summer camp, poised in front of the TV as astronaut Neil Armstrong prepared to step on the moon. The feat inspired Porsche's belief that nothing is impossible, but he did not get to witness the historic moment. The camp directors sent the kids to bed. However, in those days before video recording, Porsche's father had realized the significance of the event, and had photographed the TV screen as Armstrong touched the moon's surface. Sometimes, Porsche surmised, inspirational moments require you to be flexible and bend the rules. History is more important than bedtime. Stop complaining and do something. Porsche learned about the importance of attitude from his graduate school landlord, a former standout athlete. A work-related accident had left the man a quadriplegic and his fiancée had broken up with him. But instead of wallowing in self-pity, he became a licensed marriage counselor. He married and adopted children. And he never complained. Porsche also drew inspiration from Jackie Robinson, who endured taunts, jeers and threats to break the color barrier in Major League Baseball. Whining about life's unfairness requires time and effort. 
It won't get you anywhere and you'll still be miserable. Happy or sad? It's up to you. Many people with terminal illnesses don't believe they can have fun. Not Porsche. His entire family dressed up as the Incredibles cartoon characters at Halloween. Porsche also went on a scuba diving trip with three close friends who were painfully aware of his condition. They all behaved like teenagers and avoided serious cancer talk. After his diagnosis, Porsche had a vasectomy and purchased a new convertible. Such forward-looking actions reinforce his optimistic attitude and even allow him to fantasize about recovering. For the family's sake. The reality of his dire situation really hit home when Porsche pondered his children's future without a father. Porsche and Jay decided not to tell the children about his disease at first, and waited until he became symptomatic. He packed every meaningful minute into his interactions with them. People whose parents died when they were young told Porsche how important it was to express his love abundantly. He created keepsakes for his children, including individual letters and personalized videos. He also left them. The last lecture. He said he hoped his children would feel his presence as they journey through life. After he presented his last lecture, Porsche had a large cake rolled onto the stage and invited the audience to join him in singing, Happy Birthday, to Jay. He considered himself fortunate that cancer, instead of death from a sudden heart attack or auto accident, gave him and his wife the opportunity to grow closer. Porsche admired Jay's strength, resiliency and sensitivity. He urged her to be happy and if that means remarrying, so be it. After the audience serenaded Jay, she walked on stage. She and her husband kissed and hugged. Please don't die, she whispered in his ear.